what you fail to realize is the guy is presenting the best argument your scholars can ever deal with. And you say, I'm misleading the people. So I'm misleading the people to come and follow the Quran. <laughs> how, how is that misleading? I'm misleading people to come and follow Quran. Where, where is the logic here? Oh, he doesn't want us to follow the sunnah of the prophet. The sunnah you claim he married the CCSO girl. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> you, the Sunnis, you disagree with the Shias on some hadith. You reject some hadith. You, the Tijaniyas, you reject some hadith the Sunnis are upholding. You yourself are hadith rejectors. You reject your own garbage books. You even have Do'if, which are weak, which are not to be used. Even some of the Hassan, I'm going to quote it. You see the foolishness in their hadith books. I'm going to quote it right now. Now listen carefully. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5,669. Listen what the hadith says. Narrated by Ibn Abbas. Book number 75, hadith number 30. Listen what that is. says. When God's messenger was on his deathbed, Madaji, and in the house, there were some people among whom was Umar bin al aqtab The prophet said, Come, let me write for you a writing a, or a, a, a paper or a letter after which you will not go astray. Umar said, The prophet is sick. And you have the Quran. So the book of God is sufficient for us. It's enough. This is what Umar said. When the prophet was on his deathbed, he said the Quran is enough. So which means the Quran was complete, was full. It was enough. This is what Umar said in the Hadith. The people present in the house deferred and quarreled. They fought because Umar says the Quran is enough. Some said, go near so that the prophet may write for you a writing after which you will not go astray. While others said, as Umar said, when they caused a hue and cry before the prophet. God's messenger said, go away. He sacked them. Because he wanted to write something which they will not go astray. So according to this foolish hadith, they are saying, even though they have the Quran, they will go astray. So it is now the Prophet who has to write something for them. Why didn't Umar say hadith, Quran and hadith are enough? And if you say we should obey the Prophet, how come if the Prophet said they should bring a paper, Umar says, no, don't bring it. The Quran is enough. Does he obey the Prophet? No. Did the prophet actually say, bring a paper, let me write something for you? No. You see the garbage hadith. And they call it Sahih al-Bukhari. I gave you the reference. Now listen to the end of the hadith. Narrated by Ubaidullah. He said, Ibn Abbas used to say, It was very unfortunate that Allah's messenger was prevented from writing that statement for them because of their disagreement and noise. So who prevents God, uh, the messenger from writing this, uh, this paper for them? Umar, right? Do you believe in this garbage? We have to put it to the trash. I'm going to show you the confusion in their hadith books. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Any scholar says I'm lying, let them call right now. And I'll prove it to them. Another hadith to show you the confusion in the hadith books. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2740, book number 55, hadith number 3, narrated by Talha bin Musarrif. I ask Abdullah bin Abu Auf, did the Prophet make a will, meaning wasiya, to, to leave a legal testament? Did he make a will? He replied, no. I ask, I ask him, 
How is it then that the making of a will has been enjoyed on people? He replied, The prophet bequeathed the book of God. What is the book of God? The Quran. That is the only book he left when he was dying. This is Sahih al Bukhari in their own books. Number one, the first hadith I quoted, he, the Quran was enough. That's what Umar said when the prophet was dying. After that, again, they said when the prophet died, he only left the Quran, the book of God. Now, <laughs> now, this is the second hadith. It says the Prophet only left the Quran. This is hadith books I quoted. Two hadith reference, Sahih al Bukhari. The Prophet only left the Quran. These two hadith. Now, I'm going to show you another contradiction to contradict these two hadith I quoted. Sahih al Bukhari 5004. Narrated by Anas bin Malik. Listen carefully. Book number 66. Hadith number 26. Now check the contradiction. When the prophet died, none had collected the Quran but four people only. These four people are Abu Ad-Darda. Then he says, Mu'ad bin Jabal. Zaid bin Thabit. And Abu Zaid. Only these four had the Quran. When he died. So why was Umar saying the Quran was enough. If he doesn't also have the Quran. At that time. The hadith I quoted before. Umar told the people the Quran is enough. We have the Quran. And it's enough. Now this same garbage hadith is saying. Only four people had the Quran. When the prophet died. Hello. Hello. A book to serve as a guidance for mankind. Only four people had it when the prophet died. May God forgive you. They said we were the inheritors of Abu Zaid as he had no offspring. These four, they had the Quran when the prophet died. Are you dumb? No, serious. Are you dumb? Your own hadith book is saying when the prophet was dying, Umar said, we have the Quran with us, so Quran is enough. Hey, you wrote again in your own hadith, you said the prophet only left behind the Quran when he died. So which means it was complete, it was full, it was there, right? Do you understand the meaning of a will? A legal testament? When you leave a will, it's physical, it's there. Okay. That is number one contradiction. I'm going to number two contradiction. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, 4987. Book number 66, hadith number nine. What does it say? Narrated by Anas bin Malik. Do you see this Anas bin Malik? Whenever you hear his name, he's a hypocrite. So beware of him. Anas bin Malik said only four people had the Quran when the prophet died. He's a liar. Good. Now, I'm going to tell you another lie Anas bin Malik just told. Narrated Anas bin Malik. He said what? Hud Hudaifa bin Al Yaman came to Uthman at the time when the people of Sham and the people of Iraq were waging war to conquer Armenia and Adarbijan, Adarbijan. Hudayfa was afraid of their people. Which people? The people of what? Sham and uh, Iraq. Differences in the recitation of the Quran. Now, when we say recitation, this is something coming from the memory. Listen carefully. Recitation only comes from your memory or your bosom. It doesn't come from a paper or anything else. So, when they had differences in recitation, are you dumb? Are you a fool? If you claim that when the prophet died, you had the Quran complete and is there as a will, why will people have differences in recitation? When we say the Quran, you have the specificity of one reference. The Quran. He didn't say the Qurans. So if these four people, let's assume four people only had the Quran. 
what is the differences in recitation again? Are you dumb? Did the prophet leave it by memory? Or he left it as a will, as a book that they have? So if he doesn't know how to read and write, how come on his deathbed, he told them to bring a paper, let him write something for them? Oh, so he can read and write. Hey, is that how you've been fooling us for years? So he can read and write? On his deathbed, he's telling them to bring a paper? Okay, what if he cannot read and write? And he says somebody should write. So are you saying he, they couldn't write the Quran? Quran chapter 2, verse 282. God showed them how to write even a depth. When somebody, you have a mutual agreement with somebody how to transact the depth. To write it down. And you said these people couldn't write the Quran when the prophet was alive? Are you dumb? When you are called a fool, you are frustrated? A fool is somebody who lacks good judgment. If you have good judgment, will you say the prophet never left a Quran? A complete book? Okay, no problem. Let's, let's assume we agree with you. I'm quoting your own garbage. Now, in the Hadith, they say they have differences of recitation of the Quran. That is at the time of Uthman. And remember, Uthman, according to the so-called fabrications, he is part of the Khalifas. We have Ali, we have Abu Bakr, we have Umar, and then we have who? Uthman. Four of them, right? Uthman, Umar, Ali, and Abu Bakr. Where are the other three? Were they sleeping? Okay, no problem. Let's assume we, we agree with you, Uthman, right? Good. Now listen carefully. So then they said, so he said to Uthman, oh, chief of the believers. So now Uthman was the chief of the believers at that time. Save this nation before they defy about the book, which is Quran, as the Jews and the Christians did before. <laughs> so Uthman sent a message to Hafsa, listen carefully, Hafsa, saying, send us the manuscripts of the Quran. He told us, Afsa, send us the manuscripts of the Quran. Anas bin Malik, I think he, he was sleeping. When he said, when the Prophet died, only four people had the Quran. Hafsa's name was not there. So now, how come Anas bin Malik again is telling us that Usman called Hafsa and he said, send us the manuscripts of the Quran. Oh, so the Quran was written. And Hafsa had the copy. Hello? Hafsa had the manuscript? Ah! I can't reason with this. Hafsa? What happened to the four people who already have? And what have happened to Umar? When he said the Quran was enough, we have the Quran. And still four people had, and Hafsa was part of the four? I didn't see her name there. Was Anas bin Malik sleeping? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a Sahih Bukhari. Come on, you have to believe Sahih Al Bukhari. <laughs> Don't worry, mashallah. <laughs> so let's check. <laughs> he told Hausa to send the manuscript. So there was manuscript of the Quran before even Uthman was about to write. So let's check. So send the manuscript of the Quran so that we may compile the Quranic materials. Oh, so the Quran wasn't compiled. So how come Umar says the Quran was enough? We have the Quran. It's complete. As a book. He said we have the book of God. So if Umar said we have the book of God with us and it's enough. And they say it's not complete. And, he, and they told Afsa to bring the manuscripts. Hmm. And she was not part of the four people who had the Quran when the prophet died. A book which is supposed to be for the whole world. And even the Jews at that time, they know about the Quran, chapter 5, verse 41. They were aware of the Quran. So they didn't have their copy even. So it was these four people. So, okay, Hafsa, Hafsa was the only one who had the original. So um, Usman now told her to bring it, right? Where was he when the prophet was dying? Hmm. So when Umar said, the book of God is enough, we have the Quran. So Umar couldn't even give it to the next Alifa and say, Khalifa, you Uthman, take this copy.
Don't lose focus. Listen. Hafsa sent it to Usman. Uthman then ordered Zaid bin Thabit. Do you remember this name? In the previous hadith I quoted, four of the people who had the Quran with them, Zaid bin Thabit was part of these four people, and Uthman couldn't ask him for his copy. He left Zaid bin Thabit, and he called Hafsa by telephone. Hello, kring kring kring. Yeah, I'm calling via WhatsApp. Do you have the manuscript with you? The, yeah, the Quran, the one which was not compiled. Send it to me. Yeah, send it. No, not fax. Fax. We stop doing fax. Uh, you can use Gmail. Google me. Send it. Send it. Yeah. So she sent by Gmail. Was it Yahoo? No. So she, she sent him the copy. While Zaid bin Sabit, bin Thabit, who is part of only four people who had the Quran when the Prophet died. He was silent. He didn't tell Usman. Usman, hey, I have a copy. Oh, I have a copy here. Don't call Afsa. He couldn't tell her that. So he kept quiet. So now, Afsa, by the way, Hafsa, who is she? Did she memorize the Quran also? Now how come people have differences in the recitation? I don't get it. Because the last time I checked, it wasn't by memorization the Prophet left the Quran behind. Something is not consistent here. So now Usman then ordered Zaid bin Thabit, Abdullah bin Zubair, Said bin Al As, and Abdurrahman bin Hanith bin Hisham to write the manuscript in perfect copies. Oh, oh that means what Absa have wasn't perfect. And what Umar said, the prophet left behind and is perfect, is enough, wasn't perfect. So the ones he sent by Gmail or Yahoo, I think that one is perfect. So now they have to rewrite it and make it perfect. So they did make it perfect copies. Listen, copies. I don't know which printing press they use. I don't think there's a printing press. Usman said to the three Qureshi men, in case you disagree with Zaid bin Thabit, who unfortunately had the copy, but he didn't tell Uthman, I have the copy. But now he is telling them, if you disagree with Zaid bin Thabit on any point in the Quran, then write it in the dialect of Quraysh. All this while God was sleeping. So now, they have to write it in the dialect of Quraysh. In which dialect was it before? <laughs> the last time I checked, God says, Lisanun Arabiyun Mubin. In the clear Arabic language. The last time I checked the Quran. But here, Usman is saying, if you disagree, write it in the dialect of the Quraysh. Okay. The Quran was revealed in their tongue. If it is revealed in their tongue, why are you now saying if they disagree, they should now write it in Quraysh language again? Dialect again. If it, the Hadith, they call, is it what they call the science of Hadith or which one? The Hadith is a confused book. I'm struggling. I did well in school when it comes to English, but I'm struggling with this. They did so. They actually did. They, they wrote it in the dialect of Quraysh, right? And when they had written many copies, Uthman returned the original manuscripts to Hafsa. And where was Hafsa? Where did, they send, where did she send the other copies? I think we have to go to Birmingham Museum. Or where is it? Turkey? Is it Turkey? So he returned the original copies to Hafsa. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all the Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. I hope if you are not, if you are a wise person, I don't think you believe this, right? You obviously know what I meant by this statement. If you are a wise person, there's no way you can believe this, right? Leave it for the other people to believe. 
fazaruhum wa ma yafturun Quran chapter 6 verse 112 God says leave them and what they fabricate So all these jumbles of narrations they forgot that in Sahih Muslim 3004 the book of Zud of and softening has book number 55 hadith number 92 Listen what the prophet say according to them La taktubu anni waman kataba anni ghayra alquran falyamhu fa wahaddisu anni According to Sahih Muslim he said the prophet said when he was alive do not write anything from me whoever writes from me other than the quran should efface it wipe it out and narrate from me ladies and gentlemen the word kataba and the word hadith are not the same if i say narrate something from me is different from saying write something from me out of your foolishness out of your foolishness if your prophet is telling you don't write anything except the quran out of your foolishness how did you have books written after your prophet if there were no other books written at the time of the quran when he was alive we read your own garbages he said when the prophet was dying there was only the quran and uthman said it was enough The prophet himself wanted to take a piece of paper and write something to you. Your people rejected that. Which shows the Quran was there and is enough. Your same hadith says the only will the prophet left was the Quran. So how come you are telling me if I don't believe in a book a man from Bukhara, Uzbekistan wrote for you and somebody from Albania, Imam Albani who now endorses some of your books and says sahi if i don't believe in that book i'm a kafir you lack good judgment i just quote hadis books sahi al bukhari and sahi muslim ladies and gentlemen I think they have to make a movie about this hadith books. There should be a movie about it. I don't know how logic can resonate with this. But unfortunately, this is the hadith books the scholars keep preaching to you. Now, if they say I don't know the hadith book, let them step forward. I have a full copy of their own hadith books. And when you quote the hadith you give, you give us the isnad and the mutawatir I'm waiting for you Wallahi bulala nazay muku mushrikai You think I don't know your books right You step forward I'm waiting for you I call myself correctional officer for a reason I have your books in my hands You call yourself a Sunni Shia Tijaniya Ahmadiyya Salafia, Wahhabia, whatever you call yourself. <laughs> the mushriks are so frustrated. <laughs> Look, when they see me talking, it burns them to the core. <laughs> But I can spare them. Ah, uh, because when you are frustrated, what happens is when the argument is lost slender becomes the tool of the loser so what they do is insult 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 sahih al bukhari and they even have hadith al qudsi they call it holy hadith we will go there next time i will bring those hadith al qudsi It's like comedy. Don't forget the same book claims the prophet married a CCSO girl. And we are yet to see their scholars marrying CCSO girls. <laughs>